Hi guys, in this video we're going to continue with our basketball team class and we're going to add players to it and uh, this should be probably the, the best video of the of the three because you'll see how everything works together. Um, so go to Excel VBA SQL first then watch tons and tons of video if you want to be good at Excel or Excel VBA. There's a tutorial you can read. There's an online class you can take if you want to get uh, the advanced skills that uh, you need. So let's go to our code. And this is what we have so far. With basketball team class, that has two properties, a name property and a coach property. And the interesting thing to note that we saw in video number two was that the coach property is actually um, an object it's an instance of the coach class and here's our coach class it just has one property called name so we saw in video number two that we did something like this uh, basketball team dot coach dot name and we were actually interacting between these two classes let me just copy this put this below here now what we're going to do is further define our basketball team class. And of course, if you have a basketball team, you should have some players, right? So let's define what a player is. When I want to define what a player is, I want to make a class for a player. So I'm going to insert a class. And I'm going to call this class, if I go to the properties window, I'm going to call it player close that now I have a player class here so now I can take my code from the coach class I'm just gonna copy it to make it uh, a bit more useful and I'm gonna have and you know I'm gonna now define what a basketball player is and they're gonna have a name so I'm gonna put player name and they're gonna have a number player number so I'm gonna have two properties in this player class and the name property is <clears throat> pretty much like what we saw before you know there's our name property and if you watch don't video don't watch these videos out of sequence go watch video one two and then this one so you'll understand what's happening here. So um, we have a class now called player because I want to deal with players in this basketball team. And I have a, a property of the name of the player. And similarly, I want a property for the number of the player. And so all I'm doing is taking this and changing some changing some of the, the variable names. Uh, here we go. And I'll explain this to you in a second when I get it all done. Okay. So that's my player class I have two properties in my player class the first one is name and here's the name property this part of the name property uses the get keyword to go get and return the player's name whereas this one sets the player's name uh, similarly I have a property for the number of the player and I have a get property and a let property for number. A get number property and a let number property. This returns the player's name or returns it to player's number. And this sets the player's number. Okay, so now I have a player class. Good, very good, right? Now I can 
do something that's going to be going to be pretty interesting. I want to sort of group my players together on this team, right? My team consists of things, right? It consists of players, plural, not just one player. So I want to have an object called players that consists of you know individual players. And I can do that like this. You know, I want a collection of players that I can play around with. So to do that, I'm going to insert another class module and I'm going to go to properties and I'm going to name this one players, not player. So notice what's happening. I have a players class and a player class. This players class is going to be a collection of player objects. So this is a collection of these things. So now I want to write my players my players class. And again, I'll do this option explicit. And I want to write a collection. So I'll do this. Uh, private players as new collection. What this does is creates an object that can hold multiple things. And uh, this object is called players. And it's a collection. That's the type of thing it is. It can hold multiple things. Just a collection of objects. That's what this thing can hold. It can hold a collection of objects. So that's why I declared it as a, co a collection. Now, I want to write a, a sub-procedure that adds a player to my collection. So I'm going to do this. Sub add and I want to pass in a param underscore name as string and then I want to pass in a param underscore number as long. So I pass in two parameters, a name and a number and what I do now is I declare dim new underscore player as player and I set new underscore player equal to a new player. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to add a player to my collection of players. And all I got to do then is do players.add. And then new player, new underscore player. Okay, so that right there is a sub procedure that will add a player to my collection of players. Similarly, I want to find out how many players I have. So I'm going to do, I'm going to create a property here, property get count as long and that all that is going to do is do count is equal to proper or players dot count and if you're confused about this maybe I should do this prvt underscore so this private variable this collection here is actually what I'm adding to and what I'm counting. So I have a sub procedure that adds something to my collection right here. And what it adds is a player. It adds a player object. What is this player object? Well, that's this class it defined first. That player object has two properties, a name and a number. Now, I also want to do one more thing. I want a property that will get an item of this collection. <clears throat> I'm going to put a number as I'll put variant here <clears throat> as player 
and I spelled this wrong. Okay, so what does this do? This actually returns a player at index number. I'll put index here. So I have this collection of players. They're going to be indexed in some way. I'm going to be able to pass in an index and get that player out. And to do that, I could just do set item equal to players index. So now I have two properties in my players class. This returns the number of players. And this adds a player to my collection. And this is not a player, really. It's a player object, right? Because this player object is an instance of the class. OK, so we wrote a bunch of code here. It might be confusing to you, but hopefully not. All we're really doing is saying, OK, we have a basketball team. It has a name. Where's the name at? Right here. It's, it's a property called name. It has a coach. Where's the coach at? Well, there's the coach property. But that coach property is actually, um, you know, well, let me go back one step. That name property, what kind of property is it? It's a string. It's a data, it's a data type string. That coach property, what, what is the data type of the coach property? It is a coach object. That means it can access all these properties in here. Okay. Now, um, we can... We can also, in our basketball team, have a property for the players. So I'm just going to copy this. Actually, I'll go up top. So we have a team name. We have a team coach. Now we can have a, a group of team players as new players. So now I declare an object that is a player's object. Remember that player's act is of this class. And now I'm going to have a bunch of players that I can put it that can work with a player's property. So I can do something like this. This is going to be players. And I'm just going to copy some stuff here real quick. I'm just going to set this up for you. Okay, so now we've defined our class fully, um, and I'm gonna. There are there will be no more other videos on, you know, basketball team classes unless you want. But here's so far what we have: we have a basketball team object defined as what? Defined as having three properties: a name property here. What's the data type? The data type is string. We have a coach property here. What's the data type? The data type is coach object. You could see that because this right here, it's a coach object. That coach object can access all the stuff that's in this coach class. Okay, cool. 
We have another property of our basketball team called players. What's a data type of that property? It's, an, it's a player's object. What's that mean? Well, here you can see it's a player's object. It means it can access everything that's in this class. Players. What's in this class? Well, we have we have a sub procedure in here that uses a player. So there's that class, right? Um, it also has a count property and an item property. The thing to note here is that we wrote four classes over these three videos. This is the last video in the series. The first video just wrote this class. The second video wrote this class. The third video wrote these two classes, which we just wrote. And now uh, we can see how it all works together. So we can, we can do something like this. Um, you know, we, we set the name of our team equal to Lakers. Uh, we set the coach of our team equal to Pat Riley. Now we can do BB team. Oops. BB team dot. Now look what happened. I have a player's property here. Why do I have that? Before we only saw two. Now I see three because my basketball team class, which is what this object is, right? This object is an instance of this basketball team class. So when I put the dot there, I can access everything in here. Well, what's here? Three properties. Players, coach, and name. That's why when I click this dot, I see three things. Players, coach, and name. If I click on players, I see three things. Why do I see three things? Because in this, because this is a player's object, and it can see everything in the player's class. So if I click player's class, I see three, see three things. Count, item, and and add so I back here and I see I want to use this add uh, this add this add sub procedure and notice that before we just had these properties now we have this green thing which is a sub procedure so if I do the add sub procedure I'm gonna add Michael Jordan to my team and his number was 23 and let me also add some other players. Uh, Scotty Pippen, he was 33. Um, I'll do Shaq. I'm just going to make an imaginary team. He was 32. We'll do Larry Bird. He was 33. And we'll do uh, Penny Hardaway. Okay, so now I'm using this function to add players to my team. So if I, if I just run this code up to this point, we know what happens here because we saw them in the previous videos. I see a Lakers in a message box. I see Pat Riley in a message box. And now I get to here. Now let me step through this and see what happens. Um, first thing I want to do, or first thing that happens is, in the basketball team class, in order to, in order to, use, in order to use this add function, I need to have a player's object. So the first thing that happens is that you go set the player's object. And that's what this does. It's setting the player's object uh, in this players property here. It's it's taking whatever's in this team players private variable up at the top, you know, whatever's stored in there. Uh, I could, let me actually put a watch on that. I'll just, uh, what is this? I just put the locals window there. Okay. So if I step through this, uh, right now, you know, players players has nothing in it, right? There's no the count of players is, is zero and private players <clears throat> that has nothing in it, no variables. But 
it did set that object. Once it's set, I can go I can go add a player using that function. So now I can now I can I declare a new player object right here, new player. That's a new that's this player it's a player object which can access everything in this class. And I I declare that player object, new player, and I add it to my private collection. So Notice what happened here. Um, the name I'm passing in is Michael Jordan. Right here. Param underscore name is Michael Jordan. The parameter number is 23. Right there, 23. Now I'm taking those two parameters and um, <clears throat> I'm going to Let's see. I'm missing something here. One second here. Uh, before in this sub procedure, I want to set the name. I want to set the name here. Sorry, I didn't do this before. Name equals param underscore name and new player dot number is equal to param underscore number. So I'm passing in a name and a number and I want to attach that to a player. So here's my player object and here's where I attach the name and the number. And what is this doing? You know, this dot name is in here. That's a property of a player object. Here's my player object, new player, and I'm accessing the name and the number property in here. I'm actually setting it using the, the let let name and let number. I'm using those two. So let's step through this again so we can see what's really happening. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Right there. I'm in this player class and I'm accessing this let name and I'm setting what I pass in which is Michael Jordan right there you could see parameter name underscore Michael Jordan I'm passing that in okay cool now this new player look what happened so far new player dot name it was assigned Michael Jordan so down here this new player has a name property and a number. So far, the name property has been set. If I click again, I'm now I'm setting the number property using this uh, let number of let number property of the player class. And I step through. And now, if I go down here, uh, the number has been set as well. And now, private. So now I have a player with a name and a number right here and I want to add it to my collection of players and I step through and now I do the same thing um, if I look at players I have one item and it, Michael Jordan is on the team right now if I run if I go back here and let's say I stop it right here and I run it. Let's see who's on the team right now. If I look who is in this player's uh, object, I have three. And here they are. If I keep scrolling down, you know, I got Michael Jordan. Let me just bring this up real quick. I got Michael Jordan, I got Scottie Pippen, and I got Shaquille. So, but notice what's happening. I have an object here, priv private underscore players. What is that object? You know, that's over here in this players class. It's right here. And I'm using this add function to add stuff to the collection right here. 
And every time I add it, the collection of players goes up by one. So that when I go back here, uh, you know, I'm going to have five players if I run this. And I can actually, you know, now we can write some code that will look at that. So I can do something like this. Uh, message box bb team dot players dot count and I can see how many players I have so I'm gonna put a so I'm gonna, we're gonna see that message box then Pat Riley and then five that five right there is due to this right here bb team dot players dot count what's happening there well, basketball team uh, is our main class. It has a property called players. That players is a is a is an is a, has a data type of a players of the players class. That means it can access everything in here in the players class. And there's a property called count, and that's where the five comes from. Why is it five? Because we added five players right here to the players collection. And if we go back here, all this count thing does is look at the number, is, is just gives you the count of the collection. So here's our collection. We added to it over here. Now we are just saying, give me the count. Okay. Now let's do one more thing. Um, let's do... I'm going to do dim i as integer for i equal to 1 to players.count uh, next i. Now I want to do message box uh, bb team dot players dot item. I oops sorry dot name so now I want to loop through and see who's on my team and that's what this loop does I'm gonna go from index number one to whatever how many players I have and um, I'm going to access their name. To do that, I do players. And remember, players is a player's object, so it can access everything in here. There's this item. There's this item uh, property that will set... Uh, it, will, it will set item... You know, this property is a is a player what 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 will this property return it returns a player which player does it return it returns who whichever player is at the index you pass in but the main thing is to note that this thing right up to this point is going to return some player then i could access because a player has a name and a number why does a player have a name and a number because a player object right here is, is defined as having a number and a name. So I can access a number and name right here. And I'm just going to take these message boxes off. And I'm just going to run this. Oops. Just see if we'd run that. Oops, I didn't do this. Right, right, right. Sorry. Why am I getting that error? Anyone know? Can anyone answer me? It's because, you know, object required. What does that mean? It means there's something wrong with the way you're specifying the objects. That's because I don't have BB team here. It doesn't know what player I'm, I'm dealing with. So now if I run this, I get five. Um, oops. 
and then here I, I spelled something wrong so gotta watch out for these errors when I was when I was PRVT so all this this item thing again is doing is it's returning a player and which player whatever index uh, the player at whatever index you pass in so now let me run this and if I run it I get five then I get Michael Jordan Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan. That's because I have one here. Let me put an I here and see if we get something different. I'm just going to comment this message box out. So what's going on here again? We we added five people to our team, and now we're looping through them to see uh, who they are. And let me make this message box a little more clear. The name is, is that. I'll put an ampersand to append some text. And, and number and I'm just going to copy this in the same way that I can access the name of my player I can access the number of my player let me just comment that out take that out and you need these ampersands in between here and you'll get errors like that unless you don't so all I'm all the message box is gonna say the name is and then the player's name and I use an ampersand there and then another ampersand and then say tell me the number but use quotation marks to continue the string of text and an ampersand again and then do the player's number so now if I run this I loop through oops oh, 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 oh. so if I go back here uh, if I run this now, so it doesn't like the parameter I'm passing in for this item thing, and that's because index is long. Uh, let me just check something real quick. I'll put in variant here and I'll go over here so now we're getting the correct loop name is Scotty Pippen name is Shaq name is Larry Bird name is Hardaway right so why why did it give me that error though uh, sorry it's because here I'm saying my counter variable that I'm using in this loop is was an integer. But over here, sorry, um, I had this set to long, which means this is a bigger number than what I was. This can hold a million let's, or five million or something, really big number, whereas this over here can only hold 32,000. So it recognized that integer. You know, I, I'm, I'm saying I'm counting up to integer, but this thing is a long, and that's not good. So if I go back here and I change this to long, you know, I change it to variant because they can hold anything. But if I change it to long and I run it, I get I get the right answer. And that's why I was getting that error. Sorry about that. <clears throat> I just forgot that that was an integer over here, or that was a long. Um, and one thing you need to know, well, we'll get to that in a second. But Okay, so why is this cool? This is cool because now you wrote some pretty complex Visual Basic classes. Um you have a main class here called basketball team and here's an object of that class and you can access these three properties the coach of the team the name of the team and the players on the team and you can access them using the dot operator and when you access the name you know you do dot name and you can set the, the name of the team you could then access the name using that right here, bbteam.name. You can access the coach by doing dot .coach. But the important thing about the coach property is that uh, 
it's actually an object of the coach class, and that coach class, if you use the dot operator on that object, has a property called name. So that name right there is right here in this class. And then we saw that, you know, the player's property is actually an object of the player's class here, and it can access everything in here, and there's an add subprocedure. And that add subprocedure here, the green thing, takes a, num a name and a number, and it adds the player and their number to a collection of players. And then there's also a count property in that player's class. So you can access the count property of this player's object using the dot. And you can also access the item property, which is going to return a player. And because this thing returns a player, you can access the name of the player. So this is like the trickiest part of all the videos so far. Because what you're doing is, you know, this thing right here, this item property returns this. It returns a player object. What does that mean? That means it can act. So whatever's returned from this is one of these. It's a player. So if you click this, it can. it's going to have these properties. It's going to have a name and it's going to have a number. That's why when you double this and go into the module, you can access the name of the player right here or the number of the player right here. It's the most critical part of all the videos is, you know, being able to see how all these uh, classes are related. Um, because nowhere in here are you talking about names or numbers. There's nothing in this class that says name or number. The, the name or number comes in when you're dealing with a player. Well, look for player. Here's a player. You know, you, you, you also have player up here. You add a player here to your collection. And here you get a player from your collection. And because it's a player, you can add stuff in the player class, these two properties. Um, one more thing that I'd like to show you is that, uh, let's say, <clears throat> in our main class here, let's say we want to set some default values. So, let's see, class initialize. So I went up here in the basketball team class module and I found this drop down for class and all of a sudden I have class class initialize up here. <clears throat> so what what this is is like, you know, this is where you set default values. So what we can do here is do something like this, you know, Remember before we were stepping through in, in all the videos and these private variables are always blank. Well, I can do something like this. Uh, I can go here and I could set some default values for these things. So I could set my default team name to Chicago Bulls. And I could set my team coach equal to Phil Jackson. And what does this mean? Now when I run my code, before I do anything, before I assign anything to anything, uh, let me just show you what's already stored in here if I do this. So notice, um, I'm going to run this code and I'm not assigning anything to the BB name, basketball team name, or basketball team coach name. But when I run it, oops, sorry, I got to go back in here and use the set keyword. Because this is an object, this is a primitive data type, this is a string. 
String, integers, long, dates, those are all primitive data types. You don't need to use the set keyword. When you have an object like team coach, which is an object uh, because it's a coach object here, you have to use a set uh, word. So let me just run this. Oops. Oh, interesting. I didn't set the name properly. So there we go. So now when I run this, sorry, watch what happens. Oh. Ah, sorry. Watch what happens, sorry. I get Chicago Bulls and I get Phil Jackson. But why is that? Okay, st we'll step through and we'll see exactly what's happening. I wanted to show you, I set default values for these things. So when we step through, the first thing that happens when you, when, when this line of code was called is that we jumped right here in the basketball team class down to this class initialize function, which allows you to set default values. And I can go in here and... I'm setting the team name equal to Chicago Bulls. And remember that team name is a private variable up here. And it's a string variable called Chicago Bulls. That, and then we're setting a team coach variable. Uh, team coach dot name equal to Phil Jackson. Now this team coach of over here is, is already a, a coach object. That's why I didn't have to use the set keyword because it already was set to a, a coach object. Um, so there we set our default, our default values. And if I run it, you know, we get Chicago Bulls, Phil Jackson, and then we get, you know, now we're assigning to it instead of setting default values. Um, so I'll, un I'll uncomment all these message boxes. And I'll just run it one final time. You know, Chicago Bulls, Phil Jackson. Those were default values. Now we're setting the team to Lakers, the coach to Pat Riley. And now we're looking at how many players do we got. And then we're looping through the players. And that, if you understand this video and the last two on the Excel object models and this code you know how to build these these three these four classes here you you understand the excel object model um, and I hope you understand now and if you don't just step through the code and you'll see exactly what's happening you know download this from the website excelvbasql.com and you can actually step through this code line by line and see where it's going. It's first going to the initialize function. Okay, cool. And then it's going to set the, the coach name and so on and so forth. Right? And we, we did this many, many times through the videos. And we saw where it was going. It was going to this class and then it went to that class. And then it went, you know, then it went to the players class. But the players class contains a player object. So it went to the player class. Right? And we saw how that worked. This is the same thing. The reason that I showed you these videos is because when you write VBA code like this, uh, you know, active sheet or do something like this, you know, application dot worksheets uh, sheet one dot cells one comma one dot value is equal to hello when you do something like that look how similar you know all that is to what we're doing up here we have an object it has a property so look at this it has an object I do dot here's a property called worksheets that object has a property called cells right in the same way that you know this item is returning a player well this worksheet this worksheets is a collection of worksheets and it's going to return a worksheet object 
that worksheet object has cells in it. And or specific, more specifically, that worksheet object has ranges in it. And those ranges can have a value in it, uh, a value property, just like this has a name property. Um, so if we run, if I go bring this up a little bit, I'm just going to create a new sub, sub test. If I run this, Oops, I already had a subtest, so I'll put subtest 2. I put the word hello in cells 1-1, one, one. but that's very simple. And, you know, I really didn't need... Um, it's very simple to do that in this line of code. But you're, look how many objects you're working with. You're working with an application object and then a worksheet object here, right? Here's a collection of worksheets. And it, this, this is going to return a worksheet object just in the same way that this returned a player object. And then you're working with a range. And then you're working with a property of that range called the value. Um, I wanted to show you that what we just did in all these videos, the last three, on building these basketball team classes. All that is already done for you. I mean, to do VBA programming, all this stuff, all these classes are already written for you. Um, and, you know, the application object, the worksheet object, the cells object, all that is already there. You just have to use this dot operator and access the, the properties or the functions. And, again, if you don't, well, how do I see all those objects? Click on this op browser, and here's here's all the libraries, and you mainly want to work with the Excel and the VBA one, but all these libraries are our code that stores the objects. So if you look at the Excel library, and you look at, and you just blank this out, um, you can look at all the classes in the library, and there's just tons of them, hundreds of them. And if I look at a library like... Um, application look at all the members in it I have properties I have sub procedures right down here's a sub procedure for activate Microsoft app and so on and so forth there's just hundreds and hundreds of classes <clears throat> and within each class they're gonna have their members like properties and and functions and sub procedures and events and the main thing to realize is that all that stuff is what you're using when you program VBA and it looks like that um, but in reality, it's not hard. Um, it's, it's basically doing what we did throughout these videos. You're building an object like a basketball team that has properties. And those properties can be simple like a team name, which is simply a string, or those properties can be other objects like this coach property is an object of the coach class. And the player's property is an object of the player's class. And within that player's class, there's a player, uh, a player defined so you need a class for a player and so on and so forth and that's how classes work and that's how properties and functions and sub procedures and that is the Excel object model um, so that's it for this video I'm gonna take this code everything you see here and I'm gonna put it on Excel VBA sequel.com so you could download it and really you should step through the code to see exactly how it's working and it's pretty straightforward it's going to take you to whatever whatever um, property is being in is being used at that time when you step through and you're going to be able to see how it works and it'll go to one property then it'll go to another class and a property in that class and so on and so forth as we saw in the videos but go to ExcelVBASQL.com, um, check out all the videos, check out that file that I'm, I'm just going to upload tonight. And uh, let me know if you have questions, if you have problems, if you, if you want to send any feedback, go ahead. All right, talk to you later.